Hey everyone, I've had this squash, butternut squash, sitting around here for a while, and I'm going to go ahead and attempt to uh, skin it, get it up, and maybe make two different dishes with it. But I can tell you one thing. It's not going to cut with this. Just not going to happen. I don't have one of the three prong things. So, what am I going to do? I stab it. And I got my cheater chair here because everybody knows. By now, if you watch my videos, I can't stand very long. Peter chair and a cane and I'm going to stab some holes in this so it doesn't explode. Okay, that should be, should ease the uh, pressure. here. One of the things I didn't want to do is cut it with a knife and get the sap all over the knife. I already did that once and that was with a kabacha squash. That was rough to get off. I put it in for four and a half minutes and I uh, I took the rotisserie tray out because it's too big with the squash on there it wouldn't turn and I was afraid it might just burn it out um, took that out and took the center portion out and it's just cooking as it is I don't know if I should put a plate under it or or maybe no sap or goo or anything like that will drip down. I don't know. We'll find out real quick here. And then I'll have to, I smell it. it. Smells good. Because what I'd like to do, if I have enough, is um, is roast some butternut butternut squash and make a uh, a creamy soup out of it. We're talking low cal, low carb, everything, and it's good for you. So we've got a minute and 56 seconds. And I don't know how I'm going to get this thing out. I got my hot pads and everything else. I even got my old hot pads. They're all dirty. Well, they're not dirty. They're clean, but they're stained. Uh, but 
but I'm trying to cook it from the inside out to where it will be softer. Uh-oh, 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 I heard a pop. With a minute and 17 seconds left. But I don't see any smoke. Less than a minute. And let's hope we're lucky with this. Because I really want to use this. Because I don't have anything else to eat right now. <laughs> I went to the store and got some onions yesterday and some potatoes. Regular groceries won't go until the uh, end of next week. I mean, I could buy something, but... Okay. I'm thinking, do I need to put it on a cutting board, a chopping block, or, or what to cut it? I'm probably going to have to let it cool a little bit. I have these little mitts will hold me up and not let me slip. That might be okay. Okay, you're wondering what I was talking about, sap? That's sap. Ooey gooey sap. You don't want that on your knife, straight out. Now I've got in the center hole. I have a feeling I'm going to have to cut it a different way. Simple fact that it's still hard as a rock. Let's swing y'all around here and we'll see what we can. Yeah, see how thick those bubbles are there? You know, I mean, you could probably put that in, a, in your kid's uh, bubble blower. <laughs> Try the clever cleaver. And I was thinking about the electric knife, and I said, No, nah, I don't want to get gooey all over it, too. See, once I can get through here to where I can stand it up, Don't 
could run off. <laughs> there we go. See, it knew I needed my cane. That's what it... This is going to make it easier to trim because what I want to get down to is I want to take the... Uh, I want to take this outer rind off and get down to the uh, yellow. So I'm going to let y'all go for a couple of minutes. I'm going to dig out the seeds and uh, see if I can't cut through this rind somehow. May have enough to make a little bowl of soup with it. Okay, we'll see y'all in a little bit. Okay, and we're back. Ooh, what a fiasco that was. But I did it. Now, here's the plan. Got the oven going. 350. I'm going to take this. I scraped out all the seeds. I'm going to take olive oil. I'll drizzle on these. Sprinkle a little bit of the Himalayan pink salt on here. And we're going to do the same thing with this. Got my oven heating up to 350. I didn't say that already. Hopefully the meat to this will be tender enough to cut out after it's cooked for 30 minutes or so. And we're going to start with the meat facing down and then flip it over after about 30 minutes and see how it's doing. And it actually smells like pumpkin. And the Japanese also uh, will use this on sticks and uh, coat it in a light coat of, uh, of um, their rice flour and stuff. And... Uh, And then fry it as an appetizer. Okay, so I know y'all don't want to sit here and watch this. I just noticed something. 
these two should be together, facing the same, just so they cook the same. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to close this off again. Because I'm not near 350 that I can tell. Let's see. No, I'm at 200. So I'm going to close this off. And when I hit 350, I'm putting it in the oven. That's it for 30 minutes. And then I'll flip it over. And uh, But I'll be back with y'all then so y'all can see what it looks like. And we can see how tender it is and what more needs to be done. And, um, and we'll go from there. Okay? Talk to you in a bit. Okay, we're back. Crooked kind of, but we're back. Let's see what we got going here. I hear it sizzling. For a second I thought we were in luck and it was raining outside. And I cranked it up to 400 degrees and I had it in there for 30 minutes. Woo! This way first. Yeah, that one's that one's browning up. And guess what? Look at there, folks. Perfect. I don't even think I'm gonna have to uh, cook it anymore. Look at there. Okay, so but I do have to let it cool. Reason being, the reason being is because I want to put it in a, a blender. take some of it and just cut it and use it as a as what it is a baked uh, roasted squash buttered up squash but then I'm gonna take the other one and I'm gonna blend it with some onions and some garlic and, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of heavy cream to it and here I am. I don't know if y'all can see that. But, but I added some parsley to it and some pepper. That's all I did before I put it in the oven. And then I let it cook for 30 minutes. And I know people are wondering. Look, look at that. I'll be able to get the meat right out of it. I don't think you can eat this rind, but you know what, since I don't know, all for you. Just remember, for you, I'm going <laughs> to try it. Mm. 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 Oh. 
It's definitely chewy. It's good, but it's just too chewy. It's not like the uh, other squashes where you can eat the rind. But hey, I gave it a try for you guys, so let me let this cool and we'll get back to y'all soon. Okay, I'm back. It's cooled off. What I did while I was while y'all were on break is I cut up an onion and uh, I cooked it to where it's just translucent with some thyme and some garlic. What we're gonna do? Throw that in there just a little bit at first. And you can eat the rind on this, it won't hurt you. Just uh, make sure it's cooked well and it'll be easier to chew. This is low cal, got a lot of roughage. You can actually make this, uh, what do I do with my towel? I bet you it's clear across the room somewhere. <laughs> uh, it's good as it is right now. But we're going to make this soup. And you can serve it ice cold like a ganache or, uh, Or something like that we're going to put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil in there kick this in if I remember how to
kind of the wonder of this. Say you got some friends coming over and you forgot to heat it up. Well, you want to do something different? Put it in the freezer for a little bit. Let it get cold. Ice cold. Now it has no sugar in it, but the squash is sweet, so it's going to add to that. The coconut milk is sweet. Just remember when you open up the coconut milk, before you open it up, shake it really good because it's transported in the solids and, and uh, oil deposits. Hmm. And if it's clumpy, that's not bad.
And this is what it looks like. It's sweet. It's got the onion taste. A little bit of garlic taste. Not much. Just a little bit. The thyme taste. It's got a little bit of that. And, uh, and the squash. Now, if someone wants it a little bit saltier, doesn't like it any that sweet, they could add salt to it if they wanted to. And there you have it. You can serve it hot or cold. I promise you, you have guests, they'll eat it both ways. They'll be like, this is good. And it's good for you. Now, your kids might like it, but just don't tell them it's good for them. <laughs> Okay, guess what I'm fixing to do? I am fixing to shut this off and eat. Uh, if you cook the squash first, cook it down pretty good about 30 minutes. It's easier to cut and everything. And, and you want to cook it maybe a little while longer if you want to eat the rind because the rind is okay to eat a lot of nutrients in it but uh i'll try to put the uh calories and everything else that i find on it down uh in the description and i hope y'all give this a try because it's good no doubt anyway just remember, if you try it, it's your kitchen, your rules, you own it. Be proud of it. And it's summertime here. It is right now. Uh, it says 77. And it's 1914, so uh, 714 in the evening, but it's also been raining. So anyway, if you're in a warm place, uh, find a place to go swimming. If you're in a cold place, find a place to go swimming. If you can't do that, snuggle up with someone. Oh, and y'all stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Love y'all. Bye.